Welcome to Trending Faith here on GCU TV. My name is Ashley Romantic and let's get started with today's question. I know you have to believe in the gospel to go to heaven, but what relevance does it have in my life right now? What would you say to that, Jason? I'd say that's a, that's a great question. Um, there's, there's sort of a troubling trend in Christianity. It's interesting to me, and I, I've never quite understood how we got there. I think it may just have to do with some historical developments with revivals in, in our history, the first and second great uh, awakening and so forth. But there's kind of a mentality, and I catch it sometimes, where people feel like the only thing the Bible really has to say is how do you get saved? And then once you get saved, the only thing you're really living for, the only reason God doesn't it take you immediately to heaven is so that you can help others get saved. And so it's a very, very truncated understanding of the gospel. So I think this is a great question. Um, the Bible actually talks about salvation or getting saved in terms of something that has uh, sort of a past tense um, implication for Christians. I was saved, have been justified by faith. It talks about um, a sense in which we're currently being saved in the present. And it also talks about a future culminating uh, point at which we arrive, we, we are glorified. There's an end to salvation, the process. And so, you know, with a question like this, I would want to say there are a number of places in Scripture you can go where you can uh, read about uh, the sense in which, uh, you know, the Lord is continuing this work He began in us. He's going to see it through until the day of completion, Philippians. Uh, there's a sense in which uh, we're working out the implications of our salvation with fear and trembling. That's a current process. Um, Romans chapter uh, chapter five talks about the, the fact that that in Christ God has has justified us, and because of that, there's a sense in which we now stand in grace. Our relationship is marked by grace, and we need to embrace that, understand the the grace of God for daily living and the challenges that we face, and the provision of God, the goodness of God, and so forth. And sometimes we think of grace as sort of like a get out of jail card, but it's not. It's it's an empowering sort of thing. So Paul would say. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, Romans chapter 1, because it's the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. So it's not just, I've got this information, I've got my uh, free pass to heaven, that's where I am, but there's a power when we actually encounter the living God that transforms and shapes our lives, it changes us. And so when I think about a, a question like this, I immediately want to go to a place like um, Ephesians chapter 2, where there's this conversation about, by grace you've been saved through faith, this not of yourselves, the work of God, uh, but, but this is the work of God that no one would boast. But then the end of that, that conversation in verse 10, it goes on to say, uh, for we are God's workmanship, we've been created, renewed, recreated in Christ in order to do the good works that God has prepared in advance for us to do. There's an awful lot to do that can't really be done unless our hearts have been touched by God, unless they've been softened, uh, renewed, we've been born again by the Spirit of God, we've been filled with His Spirit, we've been uh, enabled to do all of those incredible things He has for us here and now. And one of the most effective ways that the church really can bear witness to Christ, can actually share the gospel with others, is by simply showing that He does change lives. He changes communities. He changes families. And so sometimes that really truncated version of the gospel, it's just a how do I get to heaven way of understanding, is the worst thing in terms of trying to even make sense of this for non-believers. It's just a, it's a much richer conversation biblically and a much richer experience if you understand it as an all-life sort of an experience. Yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with anything that you said. I mean, it's, it's amazing when a person comes to faith in the gospel um, and they come to realize that their sins have been forgiven because of what Jesus did for them on the cross, that act of salvation, that experience. But what I discovered in my own personal experience when I came to know Christ when I was in my late teens right before going off to college, that uh, that good news was just not for that moment of forgiveness, but it, it, I began to experience it uh, through the rest of my life and other areas of my life. And so, you know, the gospel experience, interacting with the gospel, uh, interacting with the good news of Jesus and um, his grace that is found in the cross and the, uh, the gospel story uh, does impact not just that moment of salvation, but our entire lives. And so it's a, it's a wonderful truth um, when people experience the gospel or the good news um, at that point of salvation, but for the rest of their lives. So yeah, great point. Okay, well I hope that answers your question. And as always, if you have a question or a comment, please feel free to send it to us at trendingfaith at gcu.edu or use the hashtag trendingfaith.